So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, this is Robin Norgren, and I am here with Creativity Montessori and the Meaning of Life. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, today, I wanted to kind of go in the different direction, and I wanted to introduce you to a creative person that I met uh, about a few years ago, and I wanted to just share her story about her walk with creativity and the way she connected it with her faith in God. Her name is Jill Metz. And her company at the time was called True Original. Her creative influences were God, nature, and family. And when she thinks about being an artist, that inspi- what inspires her most, she's surprised when she thinks of Picasso. She says his work is so free and diverse. You can see he was on a creative journey and not afraid to explore the limitlessness of art. As far as influences go, she says, I think I've been truly impacted by every artist I have seen, but especially my mother. Her her preferred medium of creativity was mixed media and collage, though she loves abstract too. She says, I've been married to the love of my life for over 12 years and have been blessed with two children, a girl and a boy. I went to college for a year where I took classes in art, psychology, and child development. I'm mostly a self-taught artist who's had the pleasure of taking many amazing art classes and workshops all over the country in the last 10 years. I have owned my creative business for four years and enjoyed watching it grow and evolve according to God's perfect timing. She says one of her most earliest, her, one of her earliest creative memories came from a very, because she comes from a very long line of creative women on her mother's side, she feels it's been a blessing passed down through each generation. She says one of her earliest memories is helping her mom collect flattened soda and beer cans so she could paint a character on them according to the shape of the can. As a six-year-old, she says, it was so amazing to see my mom bring a piece of discarded trash to life. When asked if her creative habits have made a smooth transition into her adult life, she says, "Um, smooth, no. She says, I believe for a very long time that my creative habits were more of a curse than a blessing, since I saw and did things in a very different way than most people. Why can I be normal, I would ask myself. It has only been in the last 10 years that I have truly embraced this side of myself and stopped fighting God's gift to me. When asked if you've had a creative hiatus, um, and if if you did, what event or circumstance brought you back to the creative lifestyle? She says, I spent most of my 20s trying to live mainstream and really blocked my creative reality which caused me to make some very poor choices. I was trying to fill the hole in my heart. I didn't acknowledge God. I didn't acknowledge my true self. And then after some time, really hitting one of many bottoms, I let God back into my life, and I let Him do for me what I couldn't do for myself, which was heal the brokenness of my childhood. When asked how has God been a part of her creative process or lifestyle. She says, most of the time I work on a piece and I invite the Holy Spirit into my heart, into my art. It was evident in my results when I have forgotten God in the process. It truly amazes me how God does this. So when I paint, well, I know it's him. The same holds true in my daily life. When things are good, it's God. And when they suck, it's me. She says, I work every day to put God first in all I do. 
I say work because this is not always easy for me. Sometimes it is, but mostly it is a choice I have to make daily. Jill's been playing a lot with ink and alcohol, not the kind of alcohol you think, and enjoying abstract results very much. Since she works very intuitively trying to let God lead, she says, I never know how any of my artwork will turn out. Recently, she began taking a figurative painting class and enjoys getting back to the fundamentals, though it is a bit challenging. Lot like Picasso, she says, I too am on a creative journey, and I am also enjoying the ride. So that's Jill Metz, if you want to look her up online. Her last name is spelled M-E-T-Z. I wanted to begin with that because last um, episode I talked about the muse and how um, there are different ways that we um, describe that uh, inspiration. But there are also moments where you are very clear that it did not come from you and it's way out of your comfort zone. And so as I've talked with many people about this idea of the muse, I've experienced it and I've seen others talk about it or heard them talk about it. And I realize that's part of this creative process. You have to start somewhere. And then once you begin and you really get committed to the journey, that's where the inspirational spark really starts to come forth. Today, I want to tackle more about the idea of God as a sustainer. And this week's prompt is all about declaring peace. The anchor verses, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. People explore many avenues in an effort to experience passion. Working, eating, sex, drugs, alcohol, motherhood, marriage, singlehood. All can be used as vices to substitute this need for purpose and for passion. Have you noticed a shift in how the world views creativity? Things like music, sewing, singing, cooking, dancing, seem nowadays to be viewed as time wasters. Yet reality shows have tapped into our need to be passionate about something. I find that I have spent a good amount of time watching these reality shows. It began as merely curiosity on my part, but quickly turned into a means to vicariously live out some of my secret goals. Too much fear surrounded my desire to try something new. Interestingly, rather than fueling me to try something new, these shows seem to somehow quench my thirst for really going out and trying something new on my own. What may have started as a potential spark for me to move a bit more deeply into my own life quickly turned into an escape from my own reality and just another time killer. Today, I'd like you to think about any hesitation that you may have felt about doing a creative project. And um, we talked about this more in the last couple of episodes, if you want to go back and listen to it. I want to ponder the things that got in the way, the successes you felt, the changes you took, or the chances you took or did not take, the revelations you came to about yourself personally. And then, for fun, I'd like you to jot down three or four shows that you watch without fail and think about what draws you in. Do they enhance or minimize your creative energy. I leave you with these questions. What are your thoughts about the idea of passion in a Christian's life? Have there been situations in your life that hinder the idea that passion could be God-inspired? I want you to look through um, the Bible um, in a way that may be a little different to you. Um, there is this book called The Concordance. And what it is, is it's a tool you can use with your Bible where you can take a word, kind of like a keyword search, and you can look up all the verses of a particular word. So for example, if you look up the verses of passion, I'd like you to look that up and then challenge your thinking on those, on those verses and, and why or why not passion could possibly be something that's God-inspired. Now, remember to write down those three or four must-see shows. Do any of them draw you deeper into your creative life? Do you find a pattern in your viewing habits? 
Are there any shows that actually have inspired you to be more creative? And thinking on your creative endeavors, are you finding that you're excited to start this process and continue with it? Or are you having more fear around it? And then have there been any aha moments for you? I want to thank you for stopping by. This is based on a course that I, um, I wrote a few years back called Your Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your Creative Voice While Connecting with God. If you'd like to follow along in book form, there is a um, copy of it in my Etsy shop over under um, Josie's Art School. So go ahead and check it out. Download your copy or purchase a hard copy. Or feel free as you're listening to the podcast just to write notes and create your own little journal where you have all your thoughts logged together so you can see your evolution over the next few weeks. Thanks so much for stopping by. Again, if you want to see more of what I'm doing, my name is Robin Norgren, N-O-R-G-R-E-N, and my websites are josiesartschool.com, J-O-S-E-Y-S-A-R-T-S-C-H-O-O-L, Or you can check me out at Bright Child Montessori, where I also offer leader's guides for Montessori teachers.